Hello, welcome to Chasing Diecast Cars. This is the second installment of the Namak video on what I found at, at their last event in the Netherlands. Mostly sub premium and premium stuff. We're going to start with mostly Norev, which I consider sub premium. And why not give you a little history lesson on them? So Norev started producing three inch of, or has been producing three inch cars since 1975. So that is 47 years of evolution that you're going to witness here. They started out in 1975 um, making one to 166 scale Shuko castings and also created some of their own castings for the mini jet series. Until 1977, they used Shuko castings and from after that all of the castings they used were their own original castings. From 19, around 1985 uh, there were no more new models that were created and production ceased in 1994. And then in 2003 we got the relaunch of the mini jet and that's basically what we are going to see here and then uh, well everything since uh, 2003 basically except for these few loose cars here in the front this is a 1982 Peugeot 505 SR by the way I've shown this before on my channel this was found at Namak 2 but not at this event at a previous previous event what I did find at this event were uh, these two uh, I've never seen these before um, asking price was two euro ended up paying one euro 67 cents for each so they have the same base it says a pickup on the top there mini jet norev and then made in france plastic base a white metal body so we got a van here with a separate piece for the light bar it's got opening doors plastic in the back i don't know if they were originally this color or they are um like uh, discolored from uh, the sun Got a little stretcher here with a very ingenious system to hook it on the side there um, goes off very easily and then if you put it back on you just snap it into place hear that click and it's uh, very sturdy it's it's very hard to get them off uh, just like that very well engineered system and then of course you can also put it in the back close the doors like that works fine so it's got ambulance stickers on both sides and then the red cross on the hood um, got the side pipes trailer hitch which is weird on an ambulance right but anyways and then the um, the other one this is a uh, Chevrolet K series pickup also has the same stickers same separate piece for the light bar uh, it's got a um, kind of a cover on the bed uh, yeah pretty yeah pretty similar to the other one now let's start looking at the uh, the stuff the mini jet stuff starting from 2003 now we start with a kind of an odd one because this uh, these this first these first two rows here are all Renault dealership packagings and so is this one as you can see Renault toys uh, starting from three years old of age Jouet Renault since 1934 kind of funny they say it in French first and then in English uh, this is the Logan pickup but this is not a Renault this is a Dacia now Dacia is a um, car make that is owned by Renault uh, I think they're from Romania originally if I'm not mistaken and um, strangely enough this is made by Eligor or at least it says Eligor on the base but um, it's got the whole Nora thing going on if you ask me um, so I'm just going to grab a knife here to open up the, these boxes interesting vehicle 
um, right after I bought it, I noticed that there's, that there's one close to my house, a real one, one to one, to one scale. So we got a metal base. Again, it says uh, Renault on the base. No sign of any uh, Dacia on the name on there. Logan pickup 2008. And again, Illigor is a uh, diecast manufacturer that does not do much three inch uh, scale stuff. Uh, this looks very much like a Norf to me. It's got lensed headlights. It's got metal bumpers painted flat black. The uh, tailgate opens up, but kind of doesn't want to fall down, so I'm not going to force it. It's got the plastic bed liner, the Dacia logo in the back, trailer hitch again, although I've never seen a uh, Norif trailer, um, and I'm pretty sure there weren't any uh, starting from 2003. And a decent looking interior. So this is a very basic uh, pickup truck based on a um, on a hatchback. Um, so yeah, interesting uh, interesting vehicle. Well, based on a hatchback, but there was a sedan version too. Uh, maybe it's more based on the sedan than the hatchback. I'm not sure. Kind of a Ute for the Australians. Uh, yeah, interesting vehicle. I was glad to find this. Then we get to the actual Renault cars. So these are not uh, dated on the boxes. Um, two euro seventy three. I paid for this and the previous one. Uh, it's only on the later boxes that there's a date on there. So this is a Renault Velsatis, kind of a luxury hatchback. Their biggest vehicle at the time, and this is 2001 model. So we got not only metal on metal, but also suspension. Uh, the uh, previous one also had suspension. I forgot to mention that. This one has opening doors. Got uh, okay looking interior in gray. Lens headlights, details in the front and in the back. And again, that's a weird trailer hitch, which, uh, yeah, that's pretty much, well, the fact that they're not true 164 will be a downside to many. But uh, the thing that bothers me most are these, most are these trailer hitches because they make them hard to fit in uh, any uh, other boxes than the, the window boxes they come in. Um, if you want to put this in a jammer it's um, possible that you have to kind of put it in like that or like that because of the trailer hitch. So all kinds of different styles of uh, packaging too as you can see through the years. Renault 5 Turbo A nice red color, sporty looking. This has a plastic base. This is a classic one, so it has rubber tires. I like the modern ones and that always have plastic tires, but uh, all these have authentic rims to the actual vehicle. So, got uh, some details in the back, even some red paint that is different than the paint of the vehicle for the taillights. Got a blue cover for the engine in the back. Red interior also. Turbo on the sides and these uh, air vents. And satellites also, as uh, most of these will have. And again, an okay looking interior. Cool. Here we have a uh, flyer that comes with it. I think it's a different one than the one we looked at last uh, last time. 
uh, when I did my video from the previous Namak event. So let's see what we can uh, see on here. The uh, Some concept cars there. The Aventime, which was not a concept car, but a real car, believe it or not. Um, although this looks like um, a model of the, the concept car and not a real one. I'm not sure. Then we got the Velsati, so we got uh, this one here. The Espas minivan, the Scenic, Scenic RX4, so the 4x4 version. Laguna Estate, so the wagon, and then the Berline, the hatchback. Megane Coupé, Megane Coupé Cabriolet. Megane Coupé Cabriolet Vacances, and the Mutrio, kind of a which is a nice one, the Clio and the Modus, and then the Twingo and the Kangoo Phase 2. This one was at the event. I thought I already had it, but uh, when I come home, when I came home, uh, I um, realized I did not have it yet. So really bummed out by, about not picking that one up. And then we got some uh, play sets. The Megan Trophy, Renault Sport, Trophy Pack, Clio Renault Sport, Sport, Little Legends, Little Myths, Anniversary Box, Master, the Logan, see, so this is also Dacia. This is the this is the end version of the the pickup we looked at, so these are also in here, and then another uh, playset. Okay, let's continue with the cars. We got a uh, Renault Trafic van. It's kind of a small van or mid-size van for Europe. The only good thing about these uh, trailer hitches is that you can. Uh, Use them to pull the cars out of the box. That's really the only use they have. Metal on metal. Just says traffic here. Doesn't say uh, a year. Rims are pretty basic on this one. Very shiny too. Got a separate piece for the light bar. The uh, hatch opens up in the back but not very far I'm not going to force it got some seats in the back there nicely uh, detailed all around this is a fire department vehicle nicely done then we got the modus Metal on metal, 2007 model. Shiny chrome rims, but they're much nicer than the van version. So this is a ambulance version, light bar, separate piece. It's got the star of life on the door, but without the uh, rod of Asclepius in the middle. So this is what a um, star of life usually looks like, as you can see here. On the front of this uh, truck camper by Matchbox. So it's got that thing in the middle, while this one does not have that. And the, this uh, hatch opens up too. Again, not very far. Here's the symbol Thalia. I don't really know this model. This is more for uh, markets that prefer sedans instead of hatchbacks. Europe is a, a sedan and station wagon market, um, mostly. 
So these might have been available here, but uh, I can't remember seeing one. 2008, it says on the base, if I can read correctly. This is a taxi version. That's a nice addition to the taxi collection. And then in the previous Namak video, when I was looking at the flyer, I um, I showed the uh, Twingo and I said uh, in some uh, silly colors. And of course, what do I do? The next time I go to Namak, I buy one of those silly colors. So as you can see, this is huge. This is a really small, tiny car, but uh, it's kind of made to fit that box and uh, compared to a big car like the Velsatis, you know. It's just way too big in comparison. Look at that. But you know, that's uh, a three inch for you. Uh, love it or hate it. 2004 Twingo in pink. So even this uh, one has the lens headlights. And nicely detailed, the flat black for the, the bumper that is metal. Just painted on there, very nice. This has a uh, sliding roof, like that. It's got a kind of a pinkish white interior. Very interesting. Yeah, I thought this was too cute to, uh, to leave behind. Uh, usually they have a rivet in the front and then base clips into the body and they put some black paint on there so it's not that obvious and this is a really nice model was really pleased to uh, find that this is the Laguna Coupe no trailer hitch I'm very glad the Twingo also did not have trailer hitch 2008 also, double exhaust, nice rims, a lot of suspension travel, a nice maroon color, yeah, really stylish, like it. And then we get to the actual Noref packagings. So um, here's a few different ones. Just says mini jet. This is in the showroom series. Uh, this was two euro. You can look at them all around. This is in the um, animal doctor version, veterinary. Renault Laguna, metal on metal, suspension, the hatch opens up in the back. We've got the Red Cross and then a dog and a cat, stethoscope and a doctor's briefcase. And then we got a few uh, emergency ones. North emergency on the packaging. This is a bit of a goofy one because they put a police uh, livery, French police livery, on a Renault Megane Trophy 2005 model. So kind of a race car. So definitely not realistic. Got the cherry on top. Renault Sport on the window. Yeah, pretty wild vehicle. And even on the, the little wing it says police. So yeah, 
It's actually pretty funny. And here, also in the emergency lineup, a Renault Kangoo van. Plastic base on this and no suspension. And it just has the the star of life in red without the, uh, the rod in the middle. Um, fortunately, it's got a broken headlight. So the bumpers are plastic on this part of the plastic base. It does have a sliding door. That, you know, it's not always cooperating like uh, you want it to. And it seems like, uh, yeah, it's not really working very well. I must say, this is kind of a dud that I've bought, it seems. The door is damaged, the headlight is damaged, and the door won't slide, and yeah, all kinds of stuff wrong with it. So yeah, not the best purchase of the whole event, clearly. This one, I paid a little more. Well, because this is the first Opel packaging I have, the first Norif Opel model, and um, it's the Opel Vivaro. It's kind of the, Opel version of the Renault Traffic. Five euro asking price, paid four thirty six. You know, and there, this uh, hard to find. I'll pay a little bit more. Uh, well, maybe they're not that hard to find, but at least it's the first time I've seen it, so that's why I consider it hard to find. Metal on metal. So instead of uh, Traffic here, it says Opel, and then two thousand and three Vivaro underneath. Got just the steelies. It's got um, this is plastic part of the interior. This uh, bottom black part here, the bumper. It feels also plastic in the back. It's got that uh, opening part too. And then in the front, mm, this also feels plastic. Got uh, yeah, a little bit of red part underneath the headlights. So if you compare it to the Renault, oh uh, yeah, interestingly, the, uh, the Renault has that little thing underneath the headlights too, but uh, clear and not in red. So you can see they're pretty much the same, but just a little different. So you got that uh, part in white instead of black. So yeah, pretty much the same fans. Just different badging, rebadged. Then. We get to the first box that actually has a date on it. This is a Peugeot dealership packaging, the 508 station wagon, uh, two and a half euro asking price, ended up paying two euro 18 cents. Um, it has, has the model again on there, and this is a 2011 production, lot 141, so 2012 release. Blue station wagon. Plastic base, no suspension, chrome rims. Authentic, of course. Got a panoramic roof. Some details in the back. Well, I think you would want there. Details on the side and also here on top, the uh, roof rails and stuff. And nicely detailed in the front also. And uh, yeah, quite a lot of detail on the interior too. You can see over the years, they got more uh, detailed. Overall. Uh, 
And then we get to uh, much more recent years, 2018, a lot 46, 2019 release. This was four euro, ended up paying three euro and 12 cents. So this is a uh, from a straight pack. So that means um, a box that would have all uh, Renault RS01 2015 Oregon team cars in it. RS stands for Renault Sport, obviously. Kind of a standardized packaging. Plastic base. It's got the, the pink, the yellow and the green on it. Oregon team on the spoiler. Even though they're very slim, it does have the lensed headlights. This is a very cool model. I try to collect all uh, releases of it. But uh, yeah, still don't have all of them. Maybe someday. Then we get to a model I did not have yet. Also 2019 release. The Renault Master 2014. Uh, all the Renault Masters before was, were the previous model that I had. So the first uh, 2014 model I have. This is in a uh, Pompier version, so fire department. There was a huge amount of uh, Noref for sale at this Namak event. Really unusual large amount of Noref, but that was great. Uh, so we got the plastic base, we got the exhaust here pointing down somewhere in the middle. Rims look okay, but not as detailed as on the um, passenger cars. Got two cherries on top. So this says in French, um, emergency vehicle and assistance to victims. I don't know what that emblem is on the door. Kind of hard to see. It's a diesel engine, DCI 100, and means 100 horse, I believe. So this has the different headlights than the previous version. Very nicely uh, detailed, by the way, those headlights. This is a pretty recent casting, so I think this was released probably 2018, 2019. And then here uh, got to painted on windows. It's actually all metal. Same in the back. Um, oh no, are these? No, this is all painted on too. This is uh, this is all metal too. But yeah, very nicely done up. So, a lot of bang for your buck with these vans, heavy models. Bumpers are metal too, all the way front and back. So yeah, they don't skimp on uh, on metal. Best bang for your buck, Norev is still today. But of course, um, you mostly get French vehicles, so that's too many people a downside. This does not have the model name on it. That means this was from an assortment. So assortment of maybe 18 different models and then a few multiples in a, in a case, you know, for uh, stores uh, like supermarkets, maybe I would be more interested in those. Hobby stores would have the straight packs, obviously. Uh, 2020, so 2021 release. So that's already getting more recent. Same base as the uh, fire department one. This is a French police version, gendarmerie. So totally different deco, same wheels though. It's cool how many uh, different decos Norev does. It's 
It's one of the things that makes them appealing to me. 2020 release also. This is a Renault 4 in a uh, fire department version. A 4L from 1964. So it's a classic. So we get the rubber tires, get the uh, authentic looking steelies, cherry on top. On the door, it says uh, Departmental Service of uh, Fire and uh, Emergency. That's headlights, very tiny ones. Bumpers are part of the base and are painted uh, silver. Big 4L in the back. Here we got the Citroën SM 1972 in brown metallic 2021 release. Although this looks more like gray metallic to me, but anyways. Plastic base, although the front part here is metal. And again, classic model, so rubber tires, authentic rims. Got the exhaust sticking out from the side here, on both sides. Nicely detailed in the back. So this is the Citroën that has the uh, Maserati engine. And then this whole um, front part here is a uh, plastic part for the headlights that runs all the way across, which is accurate to the real vehicle. Only one side mirror like they were back in the day. Very nice model, but huge in size. Then we get to a new model that was released this year. So 2021 lot, so 2022 release. And funny thing is, this is actually an error on the box. It says Citroën 308, but this is a Peugeot 308 station wagon 2021 model in Artans Grey. So an actual color of the real vehicle that is applied on this uh, model. This is true 164, like all the new models are. It's got a nice way to it. So plastic base, very nice authentic looking rims. This is a really nice uh, station wagon. I like that it does not have the panor panoramic roof, but just a solid uh, metal roof. That's also why it's got a nice weight to it uh, compared to the, um, where is it? the 508 that seemed to weight less because of the panoramic roof, even though it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, a lot bigger and more like three inch. Um, you know, this feels heavier because of the, the metal roof. I like it a lot. Uh, one downside with the modern vehicles is that um, you are li less likely to get lensed headlights because these modern lights have become so complex. This uh, white line you see here going down, that's an LED light. I think they call it the uh, sable tooth or something like that. And uh, yeah, I'm sure that would be very hard to do that in a lensed headlight. So, and uh, that's why they probably choose to do the, uh, the lights tempoed. And as you can see, the grill, it's very hard to do, but it's very nicely done. It's got that new Peugeot logo on there. So we got some uh, black paint around the windows and for the mirrors and here wise it's very dark in there and not having the panoramic roof it's kind of hard to see in there but yeah very nicely done here's uh so this is 1982 this is 2021 
So 40 years in between. This is uh, the evolution of Peugeot, but also the evolution of Norev. I think this demonstrates nicely um, how well Norev has evolved. These were considered a 166 scale, although I'm not sure they were ever true to scale, but they look uh, well fitting scale wise. And this is uh, now true 164 scale. 2022 with lots of detail authentic looking everywhere you look and uh, still has a nice way to it even though it's not metal on metal um, and for the money absolutely steel The last one here is the most recent release. I think the Peugeot was in January and this was released in February or beginning of March. This is the Citroën Mihari 1983 Azure. This is 3 inch so not to scale. Again, rubber tires because it's a classic. Plastic base. So it's kind of got this uh, Saint Tropez theme going on. I really like the seats with the two tone. Got blue on the door and then some blue stripes here. And the Azure um, name there underneath the window piece. So this is kind of a. Um, a special uh, special model of the Mihari, I guess. Almost dropped it. And again, it's got the uh, details on the back. That's a cute little model. Then, also kind of sub-premium, this Auto Art Porsche 993 Coupe. 7 euro this was not all auto art are i consider sub premium uh, but uh, it's in mint green this one i do because it does not have the lens headlights and taillights okay and i realize i forgot to, to take my screwdriver out So far for preparing very well. I'm doing this uh, in the evening after a work a day of working and that's very unusual for me. Usually I only do videos during the weekend because I'm too deadbeat to do videos uh, in the evening after work but um, I have no choice because got lots of family obligations this weekend and I want to get a video out, so you gotta do it like this, and uh, yeah. Now I wouldn't want to be seen dead in this color on a real Porsche, but for my uh, display cabinet, I really uh, really like this brightens up the uh, the thing so this uh, is a plastic base you got authentic rims I think you got plastic tires I'm not sure let's see yeah plastic tires uh, painted details all around Got a, a red interior. I don't know if that combines very well with mint green, but you know, it's bold. It's nice, um, but you know, this is an other auto art Porsche I have. 
can see here auto art so it already starts with the base where it has the engine detail and the exhaust detail where it just uh, just black plastic exhaust sticking out it's got the lens tail lights this is a 997 and this is a 993 and it's got the lens headlights so still has the oh it's got the rubber tires too okay i thought you were plastic too so also got the authentic rims obviously so this is what i consider premium and this kind of sub premium because of the plastic tires and uh, not having the lens lights that's kind of you know a difference also got some silver paint here on the rear view mirror so this one has it too sorry but these are more stylish more accurate styled this is kind of like shuko does them the uh, side mirrors but that's okay looks good but you know there's a there's definitely a, a difference there found one mini gt within my uh, price bracket bmw m3 in henna red uh, I bought the this one from the same seller that had those um, G classes. Is there something interesting to see here on the box? Well, not really. That uh, hologram is nice. Always like that. So we got metal on metal as usual with mini gt little silver paint for the exhaust nice authentic looking rims rubber tires obviously lens tail lights some exaggerated defroster lines on the rear window headlights four lensed headlights and then uh, some painted fog lights underneath. Black interior, that's kind of hard to show. Nice rims. Put it on the parking lot with my other M3s. Also was able to buy some Kyosho. These are window box ones. Asking price 11. Paid 10 for them. This is a Volkswagen Beetle 1303 in green metallic. I bought these from Clive. Clive is an Englishman that uh, I hadn't seen at Namak since Brexit and since uh, the pandemic, of course. So I was very pleased uh, to see he was back. He was kind of doing an experiment to see uh, what it would be like to come back to uh, to Europe and uh, yeah we had a little chat and uh, he was uh, he was looking very well uh, he looked like 10 10 or 20 years younger than the last time I saw him believe it or not and he's already an elderly gentleman so yeah he, uh, he and his wife go to Japan and buy stuff there, uh, die cast, and then bring it to events for us to enjoy. So we have a plastic base. Rubber tires, authentic steelies, wheels don't roll very well, nice green color, lens headlights, lens tail lights, so this is a later version Beetle with the bigger tail lights, nice little model, 
Looks great. Another Volkswagen from him, from Clive. A Nardo W12 Coupe in matte black. Uh, let's see, is it going to be as hard to open as the other one? Yeah, it seems like it. Okay, I'm going to wiggle with my uh, blunt knife here a little bit. I'm hoping to get in there. Yes. There you go. Whoops. Screw fell off. Again, plastic base, black rims, so it's all looking very dark. Luckily there's some color on there and then this roll bar is silver. Nicely detailed headlights though. Interior is nice too, lots of detail. And still lights. So these VWs were also uh, available as Solido. So as you can see here, the base on the bottom says Solido and the one on the above says Kyosho. Kyosho is the original and uh, Kyosho made some for Solido. They have a uh, VW set. So as you can see, the same model, just a different color. I'll put those here. And it's the same with the um, VW Beetle, Solido on the bottom and Kyosho on top. So, nice metallic blue and nice metallic green. And then the last Kyosho is a Nissan GTR in black. These were the only three he had. Uh, if I had a choice, wouldn't have chosen the, the black ones, but you know, uh, sometimes, sometimes you just gotta grab what you can find. And oh yeah, this came off much easier. In this case, two of them were black. Well, that's actually off the case, okay. This is not going to work. I need a different bit that will actually fit. Let's try this one. Okay. Just says GTR on the base, very basic. Gray rims. Get four lens tail lights. Nice exhaust detail there, like that. Little spoiler, it's probably plastic, yeah. So, nice addition to the GTR collection. And then, that seller that had the uh, Mini GT also had this sign up. 50 euro, six times Mercedes-Benz G-Class. Comes down to eight euro and 33 cents each. And these are iScale. I did not know this brand, but they looked good and uh, I said, I'll buy them all. So apparently iScale is German and uh, they produce in uh, China. So 
interestingly. Uh, let's see what they are like and let's compare them to my other premium G classes I have. Uh, I have Kyosho, which simulates small, and I have Aracar that seem a bit big. So let's see if this maybe is accurate to scale. Okay, this comes off easy. That's already a plus. It's got this little uh, plaque around there. G-Class official licensed by Daimler AG. High scale discovered the magic of miniatures. Okay, cool. Okay, that goes well so far. I think these, this high scale brand is already known in the bigger scales but uh, i think they're venturing into 164 scale this might be the first model model they've done i'm not sure about that though don't quote me on that okay i have to put this back in there otherwise i'm going to take up too much space so we have what seems to be a plastic base. Just says Mercedes-Benz G-Class 164, high scale, made in China. Got the double exhaust, painted silver. Can't really see them on the side, but they did do the trouble of uh, painting them. Got the um, running boards in chrome. Got gray rims. And we've got chrome brake discs with calipers that are painted in the color of the vehicle and do, that do not turn with the wheels. So that's, uh, well, that's great. Because often when you have brake calipers, they turn with the wheels and that looks really silly. But these don't, so that's, uh, that's very nicely done. Uh, yeah, that's really a job well done from them. Uh, we got lens headlights, of course, lots of details in the front, very cr chromey grill. We got uh, details around the windows. Nice light colored interior. And stay lights also. Got the, those LED tail lights. Some chrome on the cover for the spare wheel. And they also have a little trailer hitch, which seems pretty useless because it's just uh, against the bumper there. So you can't really get a trailer uh, between there, I think. Uh, does that mean they are planning on putting out trailers too in the future? I'm not sure. This should stick out way more to actually be able to put the trailer on there. Uh, but does mean if you put one on that it cannot come undone because it's going to be uh, stuck against the bumper but it's also going to be hard to turn i, mean, I think interior wise i'm going to try to show you uh, this is a two-tone interior so you got uh, black combined with a uh, white or maybe off-white cream color um, it's got a lot of detail on the uh, on the uh, instrument cluster and on the steering wheel but uh, again it's kind of hard to show you maybe if i use my little magnifying glass light i can show you let's see if we can uh, we can make that happen mm, let's see Oh, it's very blurry. Does that work? Kind of does. It's still not very sharp, is it? I'm really experimenting here. Maybe like this. No, that's not going to work. Well, you get the point. It's very nicely detailed on the interior. 
I'm a sucker for that. So uh, one downside, the uh, sidebars do have a reflective piece on there, but I think if you look at the top, they're too much inward. It should be much more, uh, you know, straight up. If you know what I mean. Can't really see much in the mirrors that are position positioned like that, I think. That's pretty much the only uh, criticism. And of course, the, the brake discs that are chromey. Um, it's a bit, well, over the top, it seems. It makes them very visible. You know, if they were black plastic, it would be hard to see. And this makes them very visible, but maybe a little too, uh, too flashy. Um, size wise. Um, I'll compare one of the other colors because um, um, you got the all kinds of different colors here. Uh, let's see if I can just rip this open or not. I don't care for the plastic. I'll well, keep the box through. Whoa, that went off really easy. A little bit too easy. Silver one here. This one has a black interior. So same details. So let's take uh, a silver Kyosho, which I always thought was a little small for scale. And uh, if you compare them, you can actually see it is kind of small. So the, um, the wheelbase is a little bit smaller and the bodies is a little bit smaller, the Kyosho one. I don't know if the, um, the newer G-classes have grown a lot in size compared to the older ones, but this seems like a very big difference, right? We got a red one. So I like to collect the G class. I think that's obvious. Uh, if I can find them under 10 euro, I'll grab them all. That's why I've got four Kyosho and two Aerocar. Uh, Tarmac does win one, two and a few other brands, but never found those within my uh, price bracket. So this has the same gray rims as the uh, and the teal one, but with the black interior. Nice red color. Sweet. Here's the white one. So I'll give you an overview of the parking lot at the end of this video. If you are bored of seeing these, you can uh, skip ahead, obviously. 
This one I had the red interior, so that's something new. I like that they bother to put uh, all kinds of different colors of interiors on there. Uh, they really do uh, seem to make a lot of uh, effort to uh, make these appealing and all that for that kind of money. I think that's a, a big achievement, certainly in, in these days. Uh, maybe they want to make a name for themselves and uh, that's why they're uh, rel rel relatively cheap. I mean, this is cheaper than what uh, I would have to pay for a Hot Wheels premium car in, uh, in a supermarket here. The few supermarkets that have them sell them for 10, 11, 12 euro. So this is a little over 8 euro for a nice model car like this. Yeah, I'll take it. So interior, let's try and uh, show you that nice red interior. Let's see if I can uh, shed some light in there. Does really show uh, in this light the the red. It's actually two tone, is it? No, it's not. It's all red seats, but then the door cards are two tone, black and red. Yeah, I'm not able to show that, but you get the picture. Yeah, let's take this black one next. This has that uh, off-white interior, like the teal one had, which combines very well with the black, I think. Not a lot of to see, not a lot to see on the outside because it's black, but it does uh, make for the interior to be uh, much better visible. It seems. And then the last one, partially in gold. This is a quite a nice combination. Black interior, black bumpers, let's combine this one to the error car. So this is the base of the error car. Um, this actually depicts a G63 AMG. These don't really tell a, a specific model. Uh, maybe the, um, the real G-Class buffs can, uh, can tell what kind of uh, engine this would have. Uh, so let's see size-wise, because I think these error cars are too big. 
Um, wheelbase, I think they are the same. Of course, the air car wheels are bigger, but uh, when it comes to wheelbase, it seems the same size wise. Well, these don't seem very far off, I must say. Yeah, size wise, they seem very close. Yeah, so I think it's been the Kyosho that have been too small all along. Because if I put these two next to one another, they are pretty much the same. You can see what I mean with the mirrors. Left, the air car has the mirrors kind of, you know, straight up. And then the eye scale has them a bit inward, too much. Yeah, that's what I meant with the, with the scale. Aerocar one has the opening door in the back. It's also got the nice chrome piece for the spare wheel cover, but the Kyosho does that have that too. No lens tail lights on the Aerocar. Does have lens tail light, uh, lens headlights, sorry. But the, uh, I must say the eye scale is overall much nicer in uh, in detail, it seems. The big wheels, yeah, they look a bit cartoonish on the air car. So let's do a little pan over. Let's, uh, let's put this one here. Of the parking lot. So here we got four Kyosho G classes that we've now established are too small in scale, or maybe they're just an older model and the newer model has grown so much. Then we got the Era Car, got uh, the Dubai version, police version, also. Then we got a few of the high scale ones. And there's a, a few more over there. Porsches next to one another. Here we got the M3 collection. So the first release in white and the new one in red. And then my absolute favorite. And um, in uh, my top three of uh, favorite mini GT models, the Alpina version. Doesn't say on the base as usual with mini GT. I think these rims are absolutely stunning. I like the Alpina striping on the side. The Alpina color is really spot on. The badging. Yeah, this is definitely uh, a winner for me. Alpina on the bumper lip in the front. Awesome. And of course, we got the, uh, the Peugeot, the Norev, also on there. Because it's true 164 scale. Then we got the Kyosho slash, slash Solido in the back. So again, a nice parking lot. Thanks for watching. Bye.